When I made vlog 115, I used this passive preamp for a little experiment. I did not really like it at the time, but some of you reacted with some very informative comments on the vlog, and it made me think. This little preamp needs a second chance. And here it is. A passive preamp is basically just a switch for your sources and a volume control. It is passive because it has no powered electronics in it. Well, the aim of any passive preamp design is to have no, or more realistic, to have the least amount of sonic effect on the sound. There are less electronics, so this means less things can go wrong. It can generate noises like transformer hum, and there is one less power cable to plug in and cable manage. While it has limitations as far as placement in the system goes, more on that later, it can't amplify sources that have a low output and it does not come with a remote. Okay, with that out of the way, let's talk about my experiment. The most important rule that I broke was using a long cable between the pre and the power amp. Now, why is that important? Well, first we need to understand that the output from, let's say, your CD player is not going to be amplified by this passive preamp. All you do is reducing the current coming from your CD player. In other words, with the volume control at maximum, it is the same as connecting your CD player directly to your power amp. So the volume control in the passive preamp is basically a resistor. And by having such a long cable on a resistor, you are actually creating a low pass filter. This means you can get roll off in the high frequencies. Now remember that I told you in the vlog that it sounded a bit muffled? Yes, well, that is what a 4 meter cable will do. So to solve that, you need to use a short cable. So after looking at your comments, I decided to give this preamp a rematch. Here you can see what I did. I used the shortest cables that I have in my collection and connected two CD players to the preamp. These two cables are the same brand, it's just the sleeve that is different. And I used a short QAD cable to connect to the power amp section of my Rega Mira 3. And then it was time to listen and immediately it was clear. Don't use long cables. End of video. It's that simple. Now I could hear what the CD players were doing instead of what the long cable did to the sound. The muffled sound was completely gone. Now of course the quality of the components inside of the passive preamp will also have an impact on the sound, but this Tisbury is a pretty well designed preamp and I won't be selling it anytime soon. More so because one of you guys gave me the idea to not use it as a preamp, but as a switch to compare equipment. I think that's a wonderful idea and I'm definitely going to explore that. So that would be the same setup as you see here, but instead of being connected to the power amp, I will connect it to an input on my active preamp. Or, probably even better, put it on a headphone amp input. What if I used my Stax headphone amp to compare these two CD players? What if I connected them with the same brand cable, so the only difference I hear will be between the two CD players? Now, this is probably even better than having two CD players connected to two different inputs on your preamp. I mean, what if something small is wrong with one of the two inputs? Or, and here's another idea, I have an Arcom CD player that has two analog outputs. So you can hook it up to your preamp and maybe a headphone amp, but what if I connected both of those analog outputs to the two inputs on the passive preamp? And now, if I switch sources, I would actually only be switching cables. Would that work? And would that not be much better than having to remove one cable and then inserting another cable? So instead of having to do that, you could switch instantly between two cables. I think that's something worth trying out. Well, as you can hear, I have a lot of ideas that I like to try with this little preamp, so look out for those experiments in coming videos. For now, I will tell you about my listening experience and then we are going to end this video. Compared to the setup with the long cable, this is a huge improvement. Where the long cable sounded flat and muffled, it is now much more alive. And it was a lot of fun to be able to switch between these two CD players. Especially when you have multiple copies of the same CD, as I have, it means you can AB with the flick of a switch. Now both these players are very capable and I could not really decide which one I like best. 
The rega was a bit more neutral, the quad had a warmer sound, but the rega was more true to the original recording, the quad gave you more bass, but the rega had much more control over the bass, and so on. I would say that the rega was the better player, and the quad is the more nice sounding player. But in all honesty, I also think that the limiting factor in this experience has now become the Rega Mira power amp, not the passive preamp. My guess would be that a more revealing amplifier could make it even easier to research these differences. The Rega amp is very musical, but it's not the most revealing amp. Anyways, this was really fun. I hope you liked this video. This is all that I have for you. Let me know in the comment section what you think and I will see you in the next one.